Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, and it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good weekend. And do you know why? Because Stevie's back in the channel. Um, after a summer of little transfer news, terrible Scotland, and even a, a meet-up for pints with me, Stevie. Wow, seems like a lifetime ago. You're back, and how are things? Oh, they're fine. They're fine. Don't worry about me. Oh, good. Started the summer up at the north of Scotland. Beautiful. Good weather. Then the Euros were on, and then you put Homelander on, don't you? The boys' season finale tonight. Booked up for Venice as well, right after the first game of the season, so I'm fine. And it was nice to get a wee pint as well. It was good. Bye. I'm sure everybody's turned off now, just listening to me instead of wanting to hear about Celtic. But hey, I went and bought the new, um, do you like the new DNA top? I bought it the, the other week. It's all right, eh? Yeah. What happened to your not good, buying, it? is it just the hoops you said you were never buying another hoops kit? Oh, no, I'm not going, there's no reason to buy another hoops again, but we'll still buy the other stuff. Don't worry about that. It's nice. It looks good. Uh, I'm needing to get some merch mm. myself. I think I'm still on a couple of seasons ago with my stuff, so I need to refresh the old wardrobe. Um, did, did you did you know did you know even think about going to the the old Celtic Superstore when you were over? Did you know go in for a wee visit? I was only up at Celtic Park once, uh, right off the plane, so I wasn't really in a mood to um, to go in and. Uh, you get stuff online these days, Stevie, you know, they, they deliver to you as well, you don't need to just go into the store and, and buy stuff. I know you're a wee bit old-fashioned with these things, but you know the... Remember the, the, remember the days you get stuff sent to you for free? Oh, that was funny, I liked that one. It wasn't for free, I had to put up a few tweets, you know, it was, it was hard work I put in for those tops. Uh, I was going to ask you what was one exciting thing you've done this summer? Uh, could you distill your whole summer down to one day, perhaps? And it can be Celtic-related, it can be you know, other parts of your life related? Uh, I'm trying to think. Probably, probably up at the, not pro generally probably up at the, up in the north of Scotland, went to see a, a pyramid. It's a pyramid up in Ballater. It's not, it's in Balmoral. Genuinely, it was really good. What are we, um, it was one of the places where I'd seen it on like Instagram reels and all that and I always thought to myself, it's not going to live up to expectation, but, you go all the way up, could be journey, and then you get to the pyramid. And I thought to myself, oh, that was nice, that was good. So, while it might not seem exciting to a lot of people, it was a wee, it was a wee personal uh, thing for me that I enjoyed to do. All right, fabulous, fabulous. Not not the the thank you. Not the five or six hours we spent together. Nah, did that not register nah. with you? At all? Oh no, last Sunday was good. That wee game of football, wasn't it? That turned out all right. I was saying at the start that, you know, it's, it's been a kind of quiet summer in terms of signings. We've not had many players come in. Uh, we have now completed our, our second signing of the summer. And uh, it's another goalkeeper, Steve. We're only signing keepers at the moment. Kasper Schmeichel has officially joined us. He has signed on a one-year deal. And we're widely understood to have the option of a second year too. Uh, so just some quotes, Stevie, bear with me. Schmeichel says... Uh, I am absolutely delighted to join Celtic and can't wait to get started. Celtic is one of the world's proper football clubs, a massive name and a place of real passion and success. Celtic is what football is all about. I know Brendan very well too. He is a top manager and someone I can't wait to work with again. I'm really looking forward to meeting up with the boys in America and start our work. And then, of course, meet our fans who bring so much to Celtic. I'll be doing all I can to keep Celtic on top and bring these brilliant support more and more success. Uh, he also tweeted to say, you know, along similar lines, a dream come true to sign for a club with such a rich legacy as Celtic. Excited to be part of this historic club and follow in the footsteps of giants. A new journey starts. Can't wait to get to work. Brendan Rogers. Uh, it says, I'm really pleased to bring Casper to Celtic. He is a real quality keeper and someone with the ability and personality to be great for us. He is a guy I trust and someone who knows how to win. He lives for football and he is coming to a club where he will feel the same passion that he has for the game. I know he will feel right at home at Celtic and we look forward to working with him as we all aim for more success. Uh, no signing is ever guaranteed, Stevie. You're never, you can be totally certain that signing is going to come in and do well. But I put it to you that this is the most sure I have been about a signing Celtic have made uh, doing well in a number of years. Like, um, I, 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 without, I know people already be saying, you know, 
don't get ahead of yourself, etc. I almost can't imagine a world where Casper Schmeichel comes in and he's and he's not, you know, good for us. You look at the experience, don't you? I mean, no, he's he's one. I would say playing this, like I mean, considering his achievements for Leicester, um, punch well above his weight down there, so he's already knows what it's like to win against the odds. That's one, but I mean, in terms of his pedigree at national level, pretty sure he's got over a hundred caps for Denmark. Um, and, and you know, there's that old cliche you can't buy that experience because well, we didn't, did we? Because he's got one a free, so there you are. But it's huge, it's huge for us, and it will be massive, and it's like. A, Good continuity. It's a quite risk-free continuity from Joe Hart, isn't it? Um, I wasn't. I mean, when I heard about the rumours, um, I, I wouldn't say I was like utterly devastated or all that, but I wasn't totally excited either. I just thought it's a sensible move, and that's a that's a big one for Celtic. I would say because when do you actually turn around and say about Celtic's transfer business and go, that's actually quite sensible. Um, so yeah. Um, Again, I don't find it massively exciting, but I can see why we did it. I can see why we went for him. And hopefully, um, you can now, like, sort of get um, transfer his experience down to, is it, who's that, who's that Finnish boy's name? I'm going to butcher that Finnish boy's name. I'm going to be Alan Brazilis. Is it Sinny Solo? Sinny Salo? Is it him? Yeah, I'll come to me. Sinny Salo. Viljami Sinny Salo. I see. I knew that. I knew that. Don't worry about that. I knew that. No. So hopefully he can transfer his experience down, and um, you know the new Finnish boy will be able to gain from that. Because I think one of the big problems that we had under Joe Hart, we were probably too reliant on him. Because when Joe Hart was away, you were looking at Seacrest and you were looking at Scott Bain, and I don't want to come on bashing guys. You know what I mean, in the first uh, episode we've done in like weeks, but. I mean, genuinely, you get very fearful when the guys were in goals for Celtic, whereas Hart was so reliable and you knew you're getting a safe pair of hands with him. So, yeah, I think that's, that is the case with Schmeichel. I think it's a sensible move from the club. Um, I think the big one is that I know it's a one year deal, but you, you wouldn't be shocked with Celtic if they go and try and offer an extension or something as well. We'll see what happens there. You know how emotional, you know how emotions can play a part with Celtic, don't you? But yeah. Um, honestly, I can't say I'm coming here uh, on, and getting all wound up about it. I think it is a very decent business from us. Yeah, uh, I, I must say, like when I first saw the name, I, I kind of was a bit like you, and I was thinking, um, okay, that will do. Probably, um, you know, relatively happy with it. I think as the days have gone on, I'm kind of more more of a fan of this even than I was at the start like I actually think looking at it uh, I mean quite simply you know put the age to one side because I don't think the age is massively relevant for a goalkeeper I think if it was a centre back or a centre forward you were signing at that age you know there, there maybe would be some questions to ask but you know he's certainly got a year in him Casper Schmeichel he's, he's got more than that I think and he'll probably end up spending a couple of years with us I would guess um but, you know, quite simply, we've signed the Denmark goalkeeper from the Euros. Uh, and, you know, Denmark are a pretty decent footballing nation. Uh, and, and he's a guy with with all of that experience, a name we all know. And I just think after Joe Hart left, uh, and not just a goalkeeper left with Joe Hart, but like a huge personality. Uh, and I think it's interesting, Brendan Rodgers referenced, you know, personality and in, in that kind of the quote I read out about Casper Schmeichel. Um so I, I think I think it's a really good signing. I'm really pleased with it. I actually can't think of many goalkeepers I would rather have had in that were realistic. Uh, I know Levakovic. Sorry, there's someone outside my flat making a hell of a noise, Stevie. I don't know what. I don't know why they're uh, why they're dealing with the bins at um, twenty past eight. It just seems a ridiculous time to be doing work, but. Um, I'll, I don't know. Ah, they should just let all the garbage pile up in the street. That's it, mate. I mean, you might as well be in Glasgow. Eh? <laughs> at least uh, that's what they do there at least wait until I finish my video before you clean up the place um, but anyway hopefully you, you can't hear that you know too much um, I think it's a great signing I'm really excited I want him in and I want him playing as soon as possible I want him you know he's going to meet up with the team I want him playing against DC United uh, and I'd quite like to see Sinizalo as well to be honest and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm intrigued to, to follow that kind of uh, journey for those two over the next couple of years. But uh, Trevor for you as well, by the way. 
Casper Schmeichel's got a pretty famous dad. Not a lot of people know that, Hamish. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, do you know what? Um, I was actually just remembering. Are you just going um, Alan Brazil mad this year? Like it's. I have been. I've been watching too much. Do I don't just get like, Alan Brazil on at this get... stage. By the way, see if you could replace me. The, the show would just go from strength to strength. It'd be, it'd be replacing you at some point. But no, I was looking at um, just wee things in Jamaica and I completely forgot that he played. I'm going to give you a bit of trivia here, but you will get it because your knowledge, um, fairly recent knowledge, was Celtic. Is... No, no, no. Just can you let me finish, please? <laughs> now, he was actually, it's, he's been at Celtic Park as well most recently and he was playing there for Leicester in a 1 1 draw uh, in 2016. Now Leicester went on to win in penalties, but do you know the Celtic player who scored that day? Owner Connell. Well done. And it was a screaming as well, if you remember. It was a right footed kind of pass into the corner, wasn't it? And and Mares scored for, for Leicester City. You're muted, Stevie. No, so I'm, I was saying Mares cutting inside, or oh, I very shocked at that. But no, it was uh, O'Connell's was like such an aesthetically pleasing goal. An absolute yeah. cracker. But I, um, that was just the, the wee bit of useless trivia I had for you there, Hamish, until you actually forgot all about the Falkirk shout with for him, sorry, yeah. Yeah. So he's uh, he's played at Celtic Park then is your, your point there. Um he's played at Hamden as well, uh with, with Denmark at least once just a, a couple of years ago. So he's and well, obviously sorry, he played with Falkirk at, at all the main grounds as well, albeit a, a number of years ago. So that just all feeds in to, to the fact that I'm I'm just I'm confident that he's gonna hit the ground running. I think he's gonna be uh I think he's gonna be a really kind of solid signing for us. And I think as a goalkeeper, solid's probably one of the, the first things you'd look for. The what the thing I don't know about Casper Schmeichel is, is he capable of pulling off wonder saves? Because that's maybe the one thing you'd say about Joe Hart. He did it occasionally, but he didn't have like a, a Arthur Boric or a Fraser Forster kind of thing in him where he would just have these games where he just looked totally unbeatable. Uh, and, you know, I love Joe Hart, but maybe that's the one thing. Does Casper Schmeichel have that in it? Because I think that's what could take us, you know, past the, the league phase of the, the new Champions League. Uh I mean, you're talking in Europe. Um, listen, it's not just on him. We're going to have to strengthen that team way more than just the goalkeeping position if we want to be talking about that level of seriousness in Europe. But hopefully it doesn't get to that stage that he just needs to win points for us anyway. I mean, he's such a good goalie that it shouldn't get to him making wonder saves. The team should be able to protect him as much as possible. But aye, in, in Europe you do need one of them, um, that, you know, Boric and Foster, just another level. And I did say on this channel, and I said to, to Rizzo in the pod as well, that Celtic, you know, when you look at the, what was the, the pattern and the, the, the key feature that attribute, sorry, of getting past the, the group stage, it was always a very solid, reliable goalie who could win you points on his own, like Boric against Man United, Benfica, there was a game 0-0, he made this a wonder save for Cardozo, and it just gives everyone a list, uh, a lift, sorry, so yeah, hopefully um, Schmeichel, we, his experience can do that. But I think talking about European ambitions, just the now, so far removed from um, where my mind is, because I think we've got so much more to do than just a couple of goalkeepers on that front. So what's on your mind regarding transfers at the moment? I think Adam Eden and Paolo Bernardo are in everyone's mind. I'm still confident both are going to come in, but you know, it's the 19th of July today, you would have hoped that we would have had at least one of them in by now. I think it's just to upgrade um, and get a very reliable, solid partner to CCV. And it's, again, no disrespect to scales, so I think done well, but I think we can do better. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to see Celtic upgrade and do better. That's why we pay a stupid amount of money to see the club and, uh, you know, actively hope that they do have the same ambitions as the fan, Hamy, um, the supporters, sorry. So I would like to see that. I'd like to see a more competent left back in there, a more athletic left back than Greg Taylor. I'm not getting on Greg Taylor's back. I think he's been decent for us, but for the Champions League, you need more than just decent. I'm not being out of order when I say it. it's a drift. Um, again, I think Matt O'Reilly is probably going to leave. I don't want Bernardo just to be the Matt O'Reilly replacement. He's a totally different player, great player. Um, could be even better for us, but I think we need a, a genuine O'Reilly replacement. And then, of course, the fact that up front, like right now, we've only got Furuhashi, because Adamina's not in, 
goes away. And you can't even turn around and say to me that Daiso Maeda, as much as I love the guy as a centre forward, it's just ridiculous. You want to play your players like him in their best positions. None of this, oh, we'll just try and uh, rejig this and we'll, uh, square pegs and round holes and all that crap. Like, you know, buying quality players to play in these positions and actually upgrade um, when we were lacking. So I think we'd, we'd really need another striker. We've only got one, basically. Um, in the USA now and I'm not going to say it's like massively worrying and concerning but I'm all disappointed about it. I thought we would have at least had a couple of strikers because just to see what somebody else can do but I'm hoping that the club are working on that now but that's where my mindset is where at the moment they're the key positions for me. It is interesting when you say that, that the club have allowed O to leave knowing that Kyogo is like the only out and out striker we have. I agree with you. I think Dyson and Maida could be an option there, but I think we're all kinda we all feel that you know left left wing is, is probably where he's kind of best suited in the team. I don't think he would play as, as often if he was a striker because I think Keogh goes a better forward than him. Um but like letting O go it seems a little bit of a strange one if there wasn't a striker imminently coming in. You know, I feel like Celtic would normally be the kind of club that would say, right, oh, you can go, but you can only go once we get Adam Ida in. So I think that that's an interesting one. Um, but hopefully Ida is in very soon. For me, centre-back partner for CCV, like you say, a left-back. Those two are, are absolute must-signs this summer. I want first-team players in there. Players, you know, a left centre-back and a left-back who can start in the, the Champions League. Uh, I'd want, uh, as I say, Bernardo and Ida to come in. And I'd want a winger as well, and potentially another another centre mid. I think that's five players, five positions. Um, it's a lot of work to be to be done, but um, the club have to do it because, as you say, you know, we're putting money into the club. Um, we're back in the club, and all we want to see is that ambition uh, match. I think we've got a manager there who, if we back him, can really you know take us to heights, and I think we can do things in Europe. I'm not quite sure what things is, whether that's just getting to, you know, the, the knockout rounds of the, the Champions League, um, or, or if it's just winning a few games in the Champions League and, and really competing. But I I think um the club have to be looking to to press on with that. But I think there's always a feeling with Celtic that we might not get everything we want because I can't remember too many windows where that has been the case. And also, like this, as you notice as well, from speaking to you over the summer, but haven't been you know, in the past windows, like last window, for example, when Brendan came back, I was furious at it. I thought it was just, I had appalling business all, all that summer. I'm not going in two footed now because there's still a couple of weeks to go to we play Cole Marmock. Um, and for all we know, like the club could be working in the background, and I assume they are, and I hope they are. So I'm not going to be the same as what I was last season. But it was rant, ranting and raving like a lunatic. And again, justifiably so, because we only again got things sorted through some of the business in winter. But also as well, the fact that we had to um, rely, well, don't want to say rely, but we were helped with the fact that a ra- certain rival team were just absolute idiots, refused to strengthen as well. And um, were incompetent on the part two. Can it be getting to that stage this season where our transfer business um, again, is poor, and we're relying on the fact that Rangers might not have the house in order yet. We really have to strip that out, focus completely on ourselves, and be in the best position we can be, not just for the league, but in Europe. So, yeah, you know, if we're doing another one of these in a couple of weeks, or um, midway through the season, I would hope that we'll look back on this and go see. No need to worry. I was right, but if we haven't recruited them, if they'll get the players in that. I've talked about any positions, then I will genuinely start to worry about it. But for now, I'm still fairly relaxed, um, considering that, you know what I mean, we've hardly played like a, even a serious um, pre-season game so far. Yeah, uh, that's going to come very soon. Uh, just when you're saying Rangers uh, don't have their house in order, uh, literally, literally don't have their house in order. That's a good laugh, isn't it? But what's going on across the city? I've not actually mentioned that in the channel yet because we've been focused on Celtic, but they seem in a bit of a state. Oh, my heart bleeds. It really does. But uh, anyway, moving on. 
Fabulous. Uh, that's your Rangers segment for uh, for this video. I'm sure Stevie will be back with uh, with more later this season. <laughs> uh, pre-season game so far, I had a great 1-1 draw with Air United, Stevie, a match that I certainly didn't leave early. Uh, we had a 6-4 win over Queen's Park. I know you love friendlies. Is there anything that you've noted down from oh. the two matches? Well, there was something I was going to talk about because I was, I was actually looking at DC United squad, right? And I noticed, um, do you remember that left back that we were linked to a flight? Mah- Mahaned, uh, I stop you there, Stevie. I think I'll would. stop you there. I don't want you. Em- I, I, don't, I? I don't want you embarrassing yourself. Uh, Mohamed Yetsi did play for them. I think he left them in March. No, I, I know I was about to say he did. He left them, but I noticed that he was last playing for them as well. But I noticed that he's away. But remember that that um, he was heavily linked with us, and you had guys that had never watched him before saying, "Oh, he's the guy to replace Taylor. He's going to take us to the next level." And uh, which says checks notes. He's no longer with a club. I there they are. The online mob strike again. But no, um, the only thing I can think about is I remember. Uh, back in I think 2006 when we had a really disastrous preseason, and this is by the way where all my um, my cynicism and sneering comes towards preseason friendlies. Right, I remember we had a shocking preseason in 06 07. Like I think DC United beat us four 0 You might remember Hot Shot Wonder Kid, Frederick Adu. I do. He I, even scored the yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, yeah. So he did. I think we we were terrible. Like. Um, MLS teams absolutely bodied us. Uh, Man United reserves took us apart. We mm. were just shocking that preseason. I remember uh, an unnamed forum I was on at the time. We're basically saying we're never going to even we're going to finish like third and disaster written all over it. We went on to win the double, you know, things like that. So preseason really is is the rock and Wycliffe Sean would say it doesn't matter. But um, no, I mean DC United. That's all I was looking at. But did you know what? They've got Christian Benteke. Remember him? I was I, well, yeah. I, I was surprised when I, I saw them. He's their captain. I think he scored a lot of goals recently as well. So um, that'll be a, a a good test for our, our defense going up against him. I think he was pretty much the only. You're, you're shocked that I've actually bothered to look up on us, aren't you? You're actually shocked. <laughs> right. Let's not give you too much credit. What, what you've done here is you've typed in DC United wiki. <laughs> You've gone on to it and you've got scrolled down to the team and you've no. probably spent 20 seconds nah. scrolling through the squad and now you're making out transfer you've done market. homework. Trans- transfer market, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> what, what else did you find out then about DC United? They wear red. Uh, uh, my extensive knowledge um, says their average, what's this? Their average age is 26.31. Great information. And eh? the market value... The, Aye, their the average market value of players is twenty five million as well. Do you want me to keep going with us, uh, riveting information? Uh, is anyone still with us? No, they've all switched off. Doesn't matter, Stevie. You can stop. Okay. Uh, they, they actually were black and red, black home kit, white away kit. Um, they were founded in nineteen ninety four. Uh, they were an inaugural franchise in MLS, uh, and. Uh, yeah. All the, all the American <laughs> viewers are there. So solely disappointed at the, the Perios here. I think they've um, they recently moved into their, their stadium, Audi Field, which holds around 20,000. That's where the, the game's going to take place. And it's a late kickoff for you, Stevie. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Melbourne kickoff, almost. It's the kind of kickoffs I'm used to. Half past 12, you'll be on your Saturday night in, in some establishment, you'll be able to... Stick it on if they've got Celtic TV. This this Saturday night, is it? Aye? Yep. So it's technically Sunday. Have to. Uh, I, I, I'll see if I'm up. I'll see if I'm up. You're not looking for me to do any videos and all that after that, are you? We don't do weekends. We don't do weekends. I, I know, but I know you did that. You did that stupid one two year ago in Australia at three in the morning, and I thought, get lost, get lost. If you're asking me here, what are you hoping to? see during the the tour of the US anything in particular <sighs> the, the, honestly the, the fans that are over in the US genuinely like it's a bit it's, it's one for them as well the fans that are for the follow Celtic and don't get a chance to come over and have to actually watch it at stupid times I hope they actually get to go and genuinely do enjoy it no matter the result get to enjoy the experience and I actually mean that sincerely because you know, it's no this game isn't for the likes of me over in crap Glasgow. This is all for people in 
like air there and washers. So yeah, I, I hope they all have a great time and enjoy it because um, that's who it is really for. Uh, it's for them uh, players as well. You know, a chance to um, to get some kind of uh, you know match sharpness, all of that stuff, fitness up. Uh, and hopefully we get a positive result. I think the first two games have been fine. It's been nice to have games in Scotland, but they've not really, to me, felt like proper matches. You know, big events. I think you know these these three matches um, in in bigger stadia, especially you know the Man City and Chelsea games, kind of iconic uh, US stadiums. I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, anything else you want to get off your chest, Celtic wise or life wise? Any message to the the people who have been asking after you every single day, where's Stevie? Where's when's Stevie coming back on? No, my message would be, honestly, right now, the motto is, don't worry about that, because I think we will get a grip and sort it out. If we don't, then you can start worrying about it, but the motto is clear from me. Don't worry about that. Brilliant. Uh, my motto is, get us to 8,000 subscribers, please, because we're uh, very close uh, to being there. Less than 200 to go, Stevie, so if we get a wee push on, uh, it'd be great to get to 8,000, that'd be a, the next kind of marker, and then we can push to 9, and then 10 after that, Stevie. So, um, yeah, fabulous, thanks for all your support, uh, you know, watching the channel over the close season, and hopefully things are going to ramp up a wee bit as we go on. Stevie, uh, you can, uh, like you let Rizzo do on, on GigPod, you can see us out uh, for today. Right, you know what you find us by now, YouTube, Celtic AM, I think that's what Rizzo says, you don't do Spotify or you don't do iTunes, so all you do is go to YouTube, type in Celtic AM, you'll see Hamish doing his videos Monday to Friday, 7 in the morning, or sometimes it's 8 in the morning, he's very inconsistent, but you always get one in the morning, so aye, get, get us over the line, 8,000, and I'll be happy for an hour or something, and then I'll moan about something else. <laughs>